what is it about film photography that kind of brings you back to that nostalgic place? Is it just that we've grown up on film our whole life and we kind of have those images burned into our brain? Well, I recently was contacted by a company by the name of Dehancer, and as you guys know on this channel, we're constantly searching for the perfect photo, the perfect film look. I've done videos before on how to get that Portrait 400 look. So when Dehancer came up to me and just asked, hey, if we give you a 30-day trial, would you mind just giving us some honest feedback of what you think of our program? I jumped at the opportunity. And I think as you'll see as we head into this video, I don't see a world in which this isn't an integral part of my editing process pretty much as we head into the future. There's a reason one's called film and one's called digital, and that's because digital photos look digital. They're very crisp, there's a lot of contrast, and the things that you get in film, which is those happy surprises, those happy accidents, they don't really live in digital photography. So one thing that you'll notice about Dehancer is they give you a lot of controls. It can be a one-stop shop where you just press a button and you get a certain film stock. But the really cool thing about this is they give you a lot of controls to edit your own photos and give you kind of your own aesthetic that you want if you want to push and pull things in a certain way. So anyways, let's jump on the box. I'll show you guys a quick little rundown on Dehancer and how I edit my photos. And so here we are in Lightroom Classic. And this is an image back when I was living in Vancouver with my then girlfriend, now wife, Kim. Uh, thank you for being a part of this project that I shot a long time ago. And uh, thank you for being a good sport and letting me use this as my editing shot. So anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into Dehancer from Lightroom Classic. Just by clicking on the image, you're gonna go up, you're gonna go edit in, and then you're gonna click edit into Dehancer. Let this pop up, and I always, because I try and be non-destructive with my editing, edit a copy in Lightroom, so I always keep my master. We're gonna pop this open. You're gonna see this box open up. And what you're gonna see is, this is gonna be the standard setup that you're gonna have. I'll close all these for you so you can see these are all the controls that we're actually going to be messing with and everything that you're going to see over here are going to be all the different film stocks that they get that they deliver to you and as you can see these are a lot and these are the ones that the dehancer team actually uses as their like go-to's um, but if you go click over on profiles you'll see that you have even more which can feel a little bit daunting but if you just pop over here and you go to all films you can switch to color negative uh, motion picture, color positive, black and white, and a few other options. So this is actually a good way to like minimize how many options you have. And once you do have your favorites, just click the little heart and you'll be able to save your favorites there. What I like to do when I start off is click on the motion picture just to see what these give you. Cause I think there's some very interesting things that film emulations will, will come across. And obviously we're on this channel, we're always going for that quote unquote cinematic look. So I start here just to kind of see what this image can go, like how far it can be pushed in certain directions before I head into different film stocks that I enjoy. Okay, so as you see, as we click through these, you'll have the updates just literally click right on. I've always been a fan of this 250D. I just feel like it kind of has that grungy cinematic, um, something that you see in a lot of films that come out these days. 500T and then 50D. I also really like this. I think there's a really beautiful soft subtleness to this. Um, but anyways, let's jump out of this. We're not going to do anything in there. We're going to go to color negative and we are going to start with, let's try a few different stocks here. I really like the Cinestill 800T. There's the Kodak Gold 200, another one of my favorite film stocks. And you know, we shoot a lot of Kodak Portra 400 on this channel, so we'll go there. And if you see this little preview button up here, it'll show you what your before was and what your after was. I'm actually going to go back up and I'm going to edit this photo in Cinestill 800T. Click that preview back on. Um, one of the things that I will always do as well is I don't want you to edit while you have your film grain on. I feel like it makes too much of a difference and you kind of add that at the end and then y'all make small tweaks. So I'll always turn my film grain off. And as you can see here, the only things that we have on currently are source, expand, and print. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to head into source and we're just going to maybe add a little bit of exposure to this and maybe warm it up just ever so slightly. These sliders are very intense, so just be like very, I guess, careful with how much you're dragging these around because a small amount will go a very long ways when you're dealing with these film simulations. A little magenta, or you could add a little bit of green into this photo. I kind of like a little touch of green in there. Not really going to mess with the difference too much. And this one's actually very interesting. So if I click this on, you'll see what it does. It pretty much balances all of your highlights 
and it'll really crush them down. You can get a ton of detail. This is far too much, but one of the things that you'll see in um, a lot of these is impact. So if I drag this all the way down, it'll drop all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna leave this up and I just wanna show you guys really quick. If I crank on my white point, I can actually pull a lot of that back. So for me, what I'll normally do is I'll kind of try and find a world in which I like both of these. I kind of want a little bit of extra white point, but I also want a little bit of like extra range as well between my highlights and my subject. Can also have this be affected by the tonal range of the image. So I'll pop that up just a tiny bit and color density really doesn't do too much on this in this photo. The next one is your expand. This one is gonna be your white point and your black point, kind of similar. You can lift your blacks, or you can crush them to get a little bit more contrast, and I'm gonna lift them just a tiny bit, and I'm going to lift my white point just a little bit as well. The next thing you're gonna come down here, this option is super cool. So the print is what your photos would actually be printed on if you shot these as film photography. So what you have here is you have linear, which will be nothing. You have cine and film log. So this is log space in case you want to take this and take it into something else and edit. You have your, what is this one? You have your Fuji film, which is a little dramatic for me. Kodak, I really like this one, but you'd have to change your things as well. Um, this glossy paper is the one that I use probably 90% of the time. Um, and it has a few other options here as well. So you can pump your exposure, which you would do on your paper. So if they were doing this, like actually as they're printing this on the film, pull and push these around to try and get the look that they would be trying to get on the paper. Tonal contrast, you can put more contrast in, into it here as well. And then your color density. So you can push a little bit more, uh, just tonality into certain values. And it only touches certain ones. And this might be dictated by the paper that it uses and why with this one, it goes after the warm tones. But we're gonna pull just a touch of warmth out of this as well. And saturation. So you can control your saturation in here. So we're gonna leave that at 100. All right, next thing we have here is your color head. If we move down, we turn that on. Currently there's nothing in here, but you can see we can push blue, do a lot of color timing in here. So be very gentle with these. Pull that back a little bit. And I'm gonna pump a little bit of extra coolness into my shadows, warmth into my midtones, a little bit of warmth in my highlights. And every one of these has a little checkbox. So if you turn this on and off, you'll see exactly what just this is doing to your image and also your impact in here. This is really nice because you can just pull this down and just get a piece of what you're, what you're working with. All right, so next thing we have is the halation. I normally will put this on just a tiny bit on my photos just because I like to add a little bit of extra variation so it feels a little less digital. So I'll turn this on. I'll turn my impact normally down to around 25 just so you get a little bit of breakup on your edges and get a little bit of color tonal variation. Bloom is the next thing that I'll touch. So it's going to soften your photo, but it's also going to give it that kind of cinematic soft look where it just like blooms out the highlights, but it does it in a very strategic way where everything in your photo doesn't just go soft. Um, so one thing I'll do in here is I'll normally move the highlights down and around and I don't want it to get too intense on this photo. So I'm going to pull it down as well. But if you look at this, you're just going to get those nice soft little tonality changes um, on your highlights just to add a little bit of a cinematic flavor to this. And let's zoom back out on this. Let's see if we want to do any bit of a vignette. I think I'm going to leave this off. There's something like striking about this image, having the corners and everything bright kind of makes her pop off the image. So I'm going to leave it as that. And then the last thing we're going to go back up to is we're going to head in and we're going to mess with the grain. So you have a lot of different options in here. Um, color negative is the film stock that it uses, which is very intense. Mess with the size. You can mess with the amount. You can go in here and you can mess with the resolution, shadows, how much of this you want to bump into your shadows, midtones, highlights, and how much color you like in your grain. Um, so you have a ton of control. And the other thing that you can do here is you can switch this to positive, which is a much more subtle variation of grain that they have in here. So I think I'll do something like this, pulled out of my shadows a little bit. And to be honest, I think that's about where I would land on this photo. So that's the before, that's the after. Actually, I think it's gone a little bit too bright. I'm gonna pull down the white point a little bit. I'm gonna pull up the impact. 
tiny bit and we're going to bump this up. Let's see. And we're going to bump this white point back down just a tiny bit. And I think something like that would be where I would be to get like the perfect film look for this image. And you can see in the power of Dehancer how many options you have. So you can click a button and you can get about 90% of the way there. Or you can click a button and then you have all this control to get creative and create your own dynamic look. So with this, I would say Dehancer is kind of one of the coolest tools that I've found in, the, in <laughs> as long as I can remember. So I just want to thank them for coming to me and asking me if I would be willing to uh, make this video and just take a look at their, at their program and see if, what I thought about it. And one more really cool thing that Dehancer did is they want to reach out for my community for me doing this for the past 30 days and offer you guys 10% off if anybody was to purchase this. Just make sure you type in the code word film and uh, you'll get an extra 10% off. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like, and uh, we do everything from surf street and uh, skate photography on this channel. So I'll see you guys in the streets. Thanks for checking this out.